So these two questions here, it's important that we wrap our minds around how to manipulate these and not just resort to the calculator because this is just a warm-up for when you've got algebra in here. Right? Your calculator can crunch these numbers. What you hand it an n factorial or an n plus 1 factorial or a 2n factorial, it's just going to spit the dummy at you. It can't handle those. So therefore, you need to get familiar with how to manipulate these while you've got the numbers, then move on to the algebra. Each of these questions requires you to understand factorization and cancelling in a particular way. So have a look at this top one. Right? Clearly, I could work this out by doing a factorial, whatever that happens to be then do 7 factorial, whatever that happens to be, and then calculate, okay? But what I'm trying to do is, like, you remember as you saw those numbers increasing, right? 8 factorial is a lot more difficult to calculate than 7 factorial just because the numbers start to get huge, right? So your brain is trying to avoid big numbers. So here's the way I can do it. Uh, is my example still on the board? Yes, it is. Okay. Just have a look at this pair of lines here, okay? And we're very good. We trained this over the last few weeks at factorizing identifying common algebraic terms, in this case 5y, and then you pull them out the front, and you've turned a difference into a product. Do you see that? This is something times something, not just something minus something. Okay? Now in the same way, these guys have lots of common factors. For instance, because they're both factorials, 1 will be a common factor, and 2 will be a common factor, and 3, and 4, and 5, and 6, and all the way up to 7. You see that? So just like I pulled 5y out of that binomial over there, I can pull 7 factorial out of both of these terms. Okay? Once I factorize it out, what does that leave me with? Well, there are 8 lots of 7 factorial in here, so I say 8. How many lots of 7 factorial are here? 1. So I subtract 1. Okay? Now you might not think 7 times 7 factorial is a big improvement, on this, but again remember what I'm trying to do is avoid those big numbers and it's marginally an improvement and it will be more of an improvement when this becomes algebra later on and you have no choice but to do this, you can't just chuck it into a calculator. Same principle applies here. Okay? Now I'm going to take advantage of that unrolling thing I showed you before because I noticed there are lots of things here that can cancel. So I'm going to write 8 times 7 times 6 times 5, that's the first half of 8 factorial, and the second half is just this guy. Right? Why do I stop it for factorial? Because that's something I can cancel. So on the bottom here, I've got a 4 factorial I can cancel. I'm just going to highlight that. But then I have this other 4 factorial also hanging around. I want to see if I can cancel something with that too. So I'm going to write it out in longhand. Writing things out in longhand is my way of identifying well, which of the bits can I actually see in common and then cancel. Have a look. What things stand out? What can I cancel from the top and the bottom? The 8 actually nicely fits exactly here. You see that's exactly 8. So if I cancel the 4 and the 2 there, this whole 8 is gone. The 1 of course doesn't matter. What about this guy? Can I cancel him out? I can because part of, I'm running out of colours here, um, part of this 3, part of this 6 rather, is a 3. Okay, So if that gets cancelled it will become a, a 2. Right? So then what I'm left with is that 8's gone, I've got a 7 times 2 times 5. Did I catch everything? I think everything else has been accounted for. 7 times 10 is 70. Okay? Now of course your calculator could have done that from the beginning, but let me emphasize again, you're trying to flex your muscles so that when you get to algebra, you can manipulate all this somewhat fluently. Okay?